Hello! Hope you've had a nice day at school or at home school. Um, today's Tuesday, which means we're day two of our five day quick draws. And today is our toucan. So you too can draw a toucan. Quite simple, quite easy. And the whole thing about this week is keeping it simple, isn't it? So again, you've got best with no makeup. Haven't got my hair done, got my hat on that's hiding my hair, still probably got bedhead. Actually, it was pretty chilly today working, so I put my hat on and I'm quite happy with my nice felty hat. I love winter because I love layers and I love the fact that I can wear my hat and my gloves and my scarf. And as you can see, I wear glasses, but uh, sometimes when you see me and I don't have my glasses on, it's because I'm wearing contact lenses. But when I'm at home and I just want to chill back, stick on my slippers, put on something cozy. I don't put my lenses in, I wear my glasses. So this is me, this is the real me, just like you guys. La, yesterday we did our really cool Sid the Sloth, didn't we? Well, have a look, I'm just gonna flip it round and you can see I put in some sky background and do you remember when I was drawing him, I said, oh, I think I'll make him a little friend. There's his little friend. He's got a cute little rainbow caterpillar. So he's hanging upside down, and I just did a bit of sky so he looked like he was hanging in the trees. So I really liked him. And this week, we are gonna carry on with that theme of just doing nice little quick draws, quite simple. You guys can sit at home by yourself. You don't need mum, you just need a pencil, some coloring pencils, maybe a snack if you've just come home from school, a bit of a glass of water, and you'll be a well away. So, Again, I've just got, let's, let's show you, I've just got my coloured pencils, I've got a drawing pencil and a rubber. I've got two sets of coloured pencils, actually. These are daisies. These ones are regular coloured pencils and these ones are watercolour colour pencils. And look, my watercolour pencil, pencil box has a toucan on the front. So that is going to be great um, inspiration. Ellie says, I'm too lazy to draw, but I can listen to your accent all day. I don't know what my accent's like. It's like, I don't know, half Australian, half English, half North English, I don't know, Southern, don't know. I just keep changing it. Um, <laughs> I'm a right old blend, that's for sure. So let's get going, shall we? Look what I found. I want to show you this. So I just want to show you that when you're at home, you don't need everything. Sometimes you just need one of these and if oh one of these and if you don't have one of these you can draw with one of these it doesn't matter for me when i draw and when it's a bit like some people that like to write and do journaling art especially these quick draws is a bit like journaling it's a bit like just allowing you your mind a bit of like it open it off let all the creative juices pop out get some color um, and if you follow me and you think, well, I've, I've never drawn a toucan, I can't draw a toucan. If you follow it step by step, you suddenly go, whoa, look at that. I can, I can draw a toucan. And that's the point. It's about allowing your mind the chance to realize you're actually pretty fabulous, all of you. And all of you can do whatever you want to do, okay? So, and that's the point of me. I'm just here to unlock all of that fabulous genius you've already got inside of here, under your hat. Okay, so here we go. Are you ready? Have you got your pencil? Remember, this is me. No makeup, no gimmicks, no lights. I'm just at home on my kitchen table. Look, kitchen table pencils and I'm using my cookery stand as an easel so this is what look there it is I normally have my recipes in there so I'm just going to use that as my easel let's go old school let's just show it as it is all right I'm not going to use a tripod it's going to be my wobbly handheld and we're just going to whip up a toucan really quickly okay because that's the point are you ready yes I'm ready you're ready let's go okay Let's flip around, and the first thing we are going to do with our gorgeous toucan is, just going to get my sketch, my draw. You can just see I've got a bit of colour there from when I did, when I used this piece of paper to lean on when we did our gorgeous 
Sid the Sloth yesterday. So it's got a bit of colour from there, but that's okay. And I've just sketched out what our toucan's going to look like. There he is. And I'm going to show you how to draw him. So you can see, for me, often I have to go through the process of thinking how I'm going to do it before I do it. But there's no formula, so let's just get going. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is we are going to put in our branch that our toucan is going to sit on. So let's get our hand like a pendulum. Do is that making you feel a bit seasick? Probably. Let's get our hand like a pendulum and we're going to do a big swoop across the bottom. And I'm going to do two big swoops across the bottom. And that's going to be pretty much our branch, okay? So you put in your branch and it can be as wide as you want it. And now we're gonna, so the top of my um, toucan is gonna be about here. So I'm gonna put in his eye. So I'm gonna do my normal trick. Remember, I've taught you this lots of times. Spin, 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 spin to get your eye ready. Here we go. And I'm going to do a nice big eye today because I want him to be nice and happy and almost like he's a, I don't know, a little bit cartoony, I think. We'll make him a little bit cartoony. So we've got our eye up. Inside our eye, I'm going to do another eye. So ready? We're just going to go round and round and we're going to do a smaller eye inside. Okay, a smaller eye inside. And inside our eye, we're going to put a little, like, a little, a little triangle, like a piece of pizza, kids, a piece of pizza inside the eye. Awesome. And now I'm going to do the whole of his body, okay, the whole of his body. So let's go. Let's do the whole of the body. We're going to go from the top of the head, which is just above our circle. We're going to follow the curve of that circle over the top of our head and then we're going to go down all the way down to our branch all the way down the side down to our branch okay so that's the back of his body we've done our eye we've got our pupil we've got our little highlight we've got our branch and this is the back of his body super easy so far just on the kitchen table, using a cake stand, uh, sorry, a cookery book stand. Nothing fancy schmancy today, just you, me, and a bit of drawing. Okay, now we're going to put in the toucan's big beak. And he has got a big beak, hasn't he? So we're going to go straight across. So that's nice and flat. Can you see that? Straight across, nice and flat. But then when we get to about, oh, two centimetres from the edge of our paper... We need to curve it down. So I'm going to start curving it down like that, like a big curvy swoop. It's almost like my hand is bent over like that, like curvy swoop. Good job. Starting to look like a toucan already. I'm loving him. Hello, what's his name? I like to give my animals names when I'm drawing them. Let's call him Tommy the Toucan, shall we? No, or did I have a Tommy the Turtle? I might have had a Tommy the turtle. Uh, maybe you can give him a name. Maybe you can message me and tell him what his name should be. All right, let's put this piece of the beak in. You do a little bit of a curly line that goes into the eye, but not all the way. And then you want to go back out. And we want it to finish about as low as that beak there. Okay, so a curvy line in and a curvy line out. Super good, super impressed. You're doing awesome. Now they have, just like pelicans or eagles or all those sort of birds, the toucan's top beak goes over the bottom beak. So the way I draw it is to draw a line, kind of a straight line first, and then I go above that straight line and I kind of join it up. So watch me. So I'm going to go from the curve going to go over the straight line and back there towards the face and that's how you get that real hook sam the toucan karen that's a lovely idea but the idea was we were doing a bit of alliteration so i wanted something beginning with t something like 
Tommy the toucan or Tara the toucan. Because yesterday we had Sid the sloth. So we need to think of something else. It has to be beginning with T. We're giving the kids a bit of English along with our art today. All right, so there's our toucan head. There's our toucan eye. Now we have to do this funny bit round the eye, which is where the colour is. So he's got a yellow bit round his eye. So I'm going to start where the beak is. I'm going to go up around the eyeball, around the other side, down in line with his back, and then I'm going to curl round and go like that. It's like if I was to turn my paper that way, it's like a big, long, loosey goosey S. A big, loosey goosey S. Oh, thank you, Karen. We've got Tony the Toucan. Done. That's what he's called today, Tony the Toucan. So this is going to be our yellow bit here. So we're going to go under the neck. We're going to curl under the neck. We're going to join that bit up there and we're going to do his tummy. And it's going to go nice and wide. He's a chubby little toucan. He's had lots of fish and it goes down towards our... Oh, Terence. Oh, that's very old fashioned. <laughs> so he sat on his bent. He sat on his branch looking all serious. And... He needs to hang on to that branch. So how does he hang on to the branch? Exactly the same as Sid the Sloth. He needs his fingers, doesn't he? He needs his long fingers to hold on. So I'm going to do long fingers. I'm going to bring this down lower so you can see it. And I'm just going to curl them round a bit as if he actually is clawing on, okay? So you can see I go straight, I go round the corner, and then I go back round the corner. And that makes it look like his little claws, in fact, that one there is probably a bit too long. Let me just take it off my stand, give it a rub out, put it back on my stand. And I think we should make that one just a little bit shorter. So it goes round the corner there. There we go. So one, two, three, with one set of hat, with one set of claws, that's one bit of foot. And his other foot might be it might just have two claws showing. You might not see all of it. So we're just going to put one, two. The other one might be off in a different direction. And the toucan does have like short, sharp kind of nails on his claws as well. All right, we've nearly drawn him, you know. We've got to put in his tail at the bottom. And his tail is going to go right off the page here because it's much longer than our page. And how many times have I said to you, that is fine with me? I hate art that necessarily fits exactly inside its box. Sometimes you just want to let it be free, okay? It can be bigger or smaller. It doesn't have to fit in. And let's put in his wing here. And his wing is going to go lower. And it's going to go on top of his toe and on top of his um, branch that he sat on. Now, this toucan is obviously really cool. He's out in the wild. He's uh, got some plants around him. So I want you guys to put in whatever plants you'd like to put in. So they're probably going to be tropical. So we can put in some tropical leaves. You could put in some frangy panties if you want to. Um, you could put in like a cheese plant leaf. So if I show you what one of those looks like, it goes out like this. And it goes down and it hooks back on itself. Then it goes out and it hooks back on itself. And that's what it looks like. So it has these big lumps, big curls. And then often it has kind of holes where the rubber plant opens up. So it's a funny old shape plant. But once you've got that, if you think that looks like a teardrop, that's kind of what the shape is in between a teardrop. So you can play around with whatever you want it to look like. This is your design, your background. You could have butterflies if you want to. You can make him look fantastic. All right, so we are ready to colour in our gorgeous toucan. Let's colour him in. I'm going to start off with his eye. And I'm going to start off and I'm going to colour in the centre of his eye jet black. Now, this part of his eye, I am going to colour in black, but his body, although a lot of his body is black and white, I'm going to add purple in today because purple, if you've ever seen um, a raven or a crow, 
If you look at their, um, if you ever look at their feathers, if you ever find one in the, in the um, park or something, you'll see when you hold it up to the light that they're often really beautiful. They don't just have that one color. So that's what we want to try and achieve today. We're going to add some stripes to his nose, so I'm to his beak. So I'm going to, um, actually, if you look at a real toucan, the color is sideways, but we're going to make him look pretty funky, this guy. We want him to look a little bit cool and a little bit different. So we're going to play with the color of his beak by doing stripes. And I'm going to color in these stripes red. Now, my watercolor pencils, you see these ones here? There's two ways that you can use them. Sometimes you can color them in like I've shown you before, and then you use a, um, a paintbrush and you paint over them. Or if you haven't got a paintbrush to hand, look what you can do. You can just dip the brush in the water. And if you then color with it, it will paint with it at the same time. So it's just like using a paintbrush, but you don't need a paintbrush. It doesn't last for as long as painting with a paintbrush, but it lasts long enough. Look how cool that is. So you get some beautiful color. This is one of those kind of top tips that you think, oh, if you never knew that you could do it, now you know that you can do it, you'll have so much fun. You do not need very much paint. You do not need a paintbrush. You just need these fabulous watercolor pencils and away you go. That is one of the best art hacks I can ever give you. So I'm, I've colored him orange. I got a bit of red. And normally if you saw real toucan beaks, the color is all sort of mixed together horizontally. But we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna color them in using our watercolor pencils and let those colors be in stripes so they're nice and dynamic. He's a cheeky little one. And I'm gonna do underneath his beak. Now, I want his underneath his beak to have a bit of shadow. So I'm gonna use the yellow first and then I'm gonna go over it in orange. So there's the yellow first. Now I'm gonna dip the orange in and I'm gonna go over. So hopefully we'll get a two-tone. So I've done blending with a pencil and a bit of water, which is really cool, isn't it? The end of my beak is black. So let's get that black in nice and strong. Again, dipping it in the water. It comes out like so quick and so fluid. It's almost like all the color saturation that you love, kids. I know you love using felt tip pens, but they don't get the accuracy as a colored pencil. So that's why Karen uses a lot of color pencils. But look at the difference, look. So that part of the um, eye, I originally colored in without it wet. Now I've wet it, it comes out like paint. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, it's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. All right, I want his eye to be really cute, so I'm gonna go blue for his eyeball. He's gonna have a nice shiny blue eye. He's a happy boy, this dude. Because I'm using um, the water with my pencil, I'm not gonna be able to outline this until it's dry, am I? So you need to know that. Do all your coloring first, then let it dry. And once it's dry, then if you want to outline it afterwards, then you can outline it. You might not want to. You might wanna leave it just in colored pencil, which is a good idea. All right, so we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna do my black area. And I'm gonna do it like this, so I'm gonna, do some very loose black color without the wet pencil. Well, it's got a little bit of wet. You can see there's patches of wet, but that's okay because we're gonna make it all wet in a minute. So I'm using my colored pencil, the black one. I'm gonna do all of my areas of black and I'm just scraping really loosely. So although it's coming out like a bit ugly at the moment, isn't it? You're going, oh, Karen, I don't like that. Just trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. Have I ever let you down? Never. All right, so we've got our gray, it's come out gray, hasn't it? And that's okay. All right, now I want to get my purple. So I'm getting my purple color. I'm gonna dip my purple in the water, look. And now I'm gonna color over the top. And the water, it's gonna wet my purple and it's gonna wet the black at the same time. 
and I'm hopefully going to get a lovely kind of dark raven grey. And where you've had those blotchy patches, they're going to make it darker and lighter. And that's exactly what we want. We want it to have some texture. So by doing it really loosely to start with, we're getting texture, which helps to make it look like feathers. You can, of course, if you've got textures and felt pins, you can just colour it in and let it be um, a whole flat colour if you want to. That's absolutely fine. Today, I just wanted to show you another technique that you can do while you're at home, which isn't any mess, mum. You're not going to get everything everywhere. It's just dipping a pencil in a little bit of water and releasing the colour of these colour pencils. Honestly, if there's one thing you want to ask for at Christmas, kids, in your Christmas stocking list is a set of watercolour pencils. They are, without doubt, it's a bit like having salt in cooking. They are a go-to must for me. Whenever I go camping or if I go on holiday, that is the one thing that I pack with me. Because you can colour and you can paint and you can really, really, really have some fun with it. So now I'm just adding in an extra layer of black to make some darker areas. So I've got that lovely grey tone and now I'm just making it slightly darker by going over it. But you can see I've got that purple on there, haven't I? So the purple is really lovely. And by doing short little strokes, it gives that impression of feathers, which gives him a little bit of personality. He looks like, yeah, he's not just a flat, per a flat color drawing. He's got a bit of personality, bit of cheekiness. Going down his wing. But if you've only got crayons, just colour him in. Just colour him in with crayons. Use whatever you've got at home. Okay. This week is all about just doing it at home. None of this art studio malarkey with me and lots and lots of materials. Keeping it simple. Keeping it easy. Showing you that when you get home from school or if you finished your homeschooling and you just want to do a bit of creativity, just just use what you've got. Okay. All right. Let's do his feet. And I'm going to use this ready brown colour. And again, I'm going to dip it in the water and make it like paint. So these are his little feet. And actually, in real life, I think they're more of a grey, but I just want them to be a little bit more st to stand out. So I'm going to use this brownie colour. And then I'm... Do you remember yesterday when I did the two colours on the sloth branch? Should we have a quick look at that? Do you remember yesterday I did the two colours? I did brown and blue together. Now this one I didn't use water, so this was just shading using our pencil, wasn't it? But you can see the two colours there, can't you? Brown and blue. Well, we're going to do the same. So I've done the brown, and now I'm going to use black. But exactly the same as we've just done with the purple. By adding two colours, it just makes it a little bit more interesting really rather than just one color so it's a really good thing to start experimenting with look if i bring it down you can see the two colors so i've used black the second time why did i not start with black well because black is so dark kids that if i started with black i wouldn't be able to put a second color over the top so it's really important that i start with the lightest color and then i add black okay okay this is the tail and because the tail is he would be sat on top of his tail. I'm not going to add too much purple. I want it to be nice and dark because it would be in shadow. So that's why I'm just doing the black at the bottom. Awesome. This is my tiny little bit of tablecloth. Look, it doesn't even cover my table. Can you see my table? It's just this tiny little bit of plastic tablecloth that I have on the end of my table when I'm home. And that way I've just got a little bit, it actually came from a charity shop. It's just a little bit of that kind of rubber plastic tablecloth. And I just have it in the cupboard for when I'm doing art at home. And then I just whip it out and it just protects my table. Okay, I'm just going to colour in my leaves. And I'm going to try and make these a bit scribbly. So I'm, can you see, I'm dipping it in water, but I'm going round and round in circles and kind of creating a scribbly texture. 
And again, that's to give it a different texture than the bird. So it looks different. So we don't have to cuddle everything in really flat sometimes. You can experiment and play. So that leaf is going to be that colour. And these leaves up here, I'm going to do in this brighter green. Let's have a go up here. And I'm going to do longer strokes because these are different leaves. So I'm going to get longer strokes out here. And here. And I've kind of put them behind his head because I thought it would kind of look like a headdress. I thought it'd be quite fun. So I'm just doing nice long strokes. Now I want to outline my leaves. I'm going to put a little green one in there. I want to outline my leaves, but I don't want to use another green. So what colour I could use would be blue. So blue and yellow make green. So I'm, I've just dipped it in the water so I can draw around the outside of my leaves. And I'm just going to highlight it and go around them in that beautiful blue colour. The great thing about doing this is you get sort of half drawing, half painting in the end, which makes it look really quite unique. Now, this one here is a much brighter colour, so I'm actually going to go round it in yellow. A much brighter leaf, so I'm going to go round it in yellow. You know, I don't know if you've ever tried this, but you can really experiment with dipping your um, felt tip pens in water as well, or not necessarily dipping them in there, but you can use your fingers afterwards and you can kind of do this on top of your pens and it spreads a bit like tie dye. So if you haven't had a go at trying that, that's a really fun thing to play with and have a go. Okay, I'm just gonna use my wet brush, oh, sorry, brush, uh, pencil, to just draw in the two cans line. So it's wet, which means it glides. And I'm just drawing it in really smoothly just to outline his eyes and his mouth. And we're gonna do the same with his beak, go up through the middle. He's got one of those little um, holes there to breathe. Don't forget to put that in. You want your toucan to be able to breathe. And then we just put in our black stripes and we're done. How simple was that? There he is, our cheeky, cheeky, chappy little toucan. If you want to, you could put some, uh, oh no, I haven't done his, um, haven't done his branch. Let's quickly do his branch. He's sat on nothing at the moment. Can't have that. He'll fall off his branch into the air. And then you could put the sky behind if you wanted to, which you could just do with blue. And if you just wet it, then you can just make it go beautifully bright in behind your toucan. They're gorgeous birds. Like pelicans, aren't they? But brighter. I love seeing pelicans when we go to Redcliffe and you see the pelicans on the pier. They're great big beaks. They look like they've got a story to tell, I always think. They've been around the block and they've got a bit of a story to tell. Wise, almost like the owl of the tropics. <laughs> of course, when I was a kid and we lived on a farm, we had lots of owls. So we grew up having lots of owls. I don't think I've drawn an owl with you guys. We could do that, couldn't we? I like, I like a good owl. The owls that we used to have on our farm were giant ones, great big barn owls. And they weren't scared either. They used to, well, I guess they lived in our straw barns and our hay barns. And so they hung out and they were used to our cats and our dogs and the cows. And we would go into the straw barns and the hay barns and make camps. And they'd just like sleep, hang out and sleep and then go off and fly at night time. 
So there we go. That is our really quick, easy toucan picture, which I think looks fantastic, bright and cheerful. And he's been done using watercolor pencils, but without having to use a paintbrush. And that's the key thing, isn't it? Sometimes you wanna do a little sketch, you wanna be creative, and you don't necessarily wanna get out all of the paints and all of the stuff. Well, look how easy that is. We just drew him and we've painted him in about 20 minutes. So I am loving that. This is Tony the Toucan. Let's write it at the bottom. Tony the Toucan. There we go, guys. Send me your pictures when you've done them. I hope you enjoyed that little teach and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.